Hello. Right then, next instalment. So, as I said, I was going to go through the cams. So, I'm just going to put the cams in here. There's no cam followers, there's no, because they're getting removed. But that's perfect, because it will highlight um, easier what I'm going to show you. So, I'll just put the cams back in. still be aligned. All right, there's two alignment. I'll show you the picture in a minute. Just to make sure I've got these aligned. Right, that's in. Right, it's so one of the 16 valves. There is a cam chain, which links the two cams together. And there's two circle indents here and here on the cams, which you need to align. It's not hard to get them aligned. So once they're aligned, that's the cams timed. Now what you've got, if you look at that chain there, you just hold the unit valve still, as you can see you've got a fair amount of slack there. Now um, every 40,000 miles roughly um, is when you should do doing your timing valve change, this end. That is not on a serving schedule anywhere yet. As you can see, that is worn. So what I'm going to do is I'll just show you the dots and where they should be. Um, and I'm going to turn the camera around to known point on here and the head. Take some measurements and I'll show you how much difference it can make having a slack chain. These chains are about 20 quid, not a lot of money. So yeah, they're a bit of pain, you've got to take the cams out. But once the cam belt's off, you've only got a set of bolts, cams out, new chain, pop it back on. Um, and after I finish this, you'll, you'll see why it makes a difference. Right, so those two circles you see sat down there and there. They are your alignment circles for the inlet and exhaust cam. It doesn't look like it, but when they're aligned, they are flush with the top of this head, or the top of the head sort of goes straight through each circle, and there should be a set amount of links between the top and the bottom. And all I'm going to do, I'm just moving the exhaust cam. So you can see how much the exhaust cam can move independently from the inlet cam. So I'll just turn the camera around, and I'll show you where I'm going to take the measurement from. That's also slightly worrying where he's got red pen there because some people do that when you do your time marks, put a bit of pen and actually know where it is. But why would you mark a thing there when the time marks there? But never mind, right, let's go back to the other end of the head and I'll show you what I'm going to measure. Right, so this is the other end. So when you've got those two dots on the inlet cams lined up, this marker should be flush with the cylinder head there. And on the on the other side, this side, you'll have a marker here which lines up the rock cover. But this will move on up because this is the known known point I can take a measurement from. So what I'm going to do is just get a flat ruler, put it on there, and have the ruler because the ruler is about the same thickness as that little indent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the ruler in there to the point where it sits in there, and the chain is slack. There we go. I've got a simple metal ruler again that lines up perfectly with the top of the head because you know the head's flush and lines up horizontally with the indent mark on that cam. So we know that is your, your good data point to start with. So all I'm gonna do is move that away and all I'm gonna do is hold a bit of pressure on the inlet cam and all I'm gonna do is turn the exhaust cam very gently backwards or anti-clockwise just to the point that the tension in that chain is where it should be. So I'm just turning it now. There you go. Right, there's now tension in the chain. And what we're gonna do is move the ruler across to line up with that mark again and as you can see it's not sat in the mark so what we can do now is using your vernier is rest the vernier on top of the ruler and fit it in that point on the cam pulley to see how far in millimeters we've got difference so right we've got the cam there we've got the ruler there so what i'm gonna do vernier and it's quite a big gap so i'm gonna start with a 0.6 mil so Keep the pressure on the ruler so it's nice and flat. Try not to turn the cam. So you've got the 0.6mm, I'll just slide it across. And you can see it doesn't fully fit in that gap properly. So we want to add a bit more onto that. So we're just going to stick 0.4. So now we're measuring one millimetres. So that then, 
There you go. So that, probably not the easiest to see from there. So the gap there, this one millimetre feeler gauge, fits in that marking on the back of the cam at the same point it was when we just had the ruler in there. So one millimetre is our measurement from that. So that's quite a lot. Right, so as we know, we've got a one millimetre measurement in that chain, even though that's longer there. Once it marries up to a proper point, we've got one millimetres. So what I'll try and do is explain to you what goes wrong when that one millimetre slack in the chain is. So, engine turns over clockwise, as in this way, the way I'm turning the cam. So the cams are coming this way. So as the, this ca exhaust cam moves, it makes the bottom of the chain taut and the top even slacker. So the inlet cam will turn at its normal point. But what will happen is when, for instance, this exhaust lobe comes around to the point, it's going to come in contact or start trying to put pressure on the cam follower. And as we've done for the last video, the cam follower is a hydraulic pressure inside and they've got spring pressure. There's always um, a resistance pushing against the cam. So it's the cam's job to overcome that bit of resistance and open the valve. So we've got slack here. The exhaust cam is coming around. This lobe is then going to come into the con well, it's in contact, it's going to move around more to the point it wants to overcome the, the natural pressure of the cam follower and push it down. And as there's a resistance coming up and the cam is trying to push down, we've got slack in this chain. So what's going to happen is this slack is weaker than what the pressure on those cam followers is going to be. So what's going to happen is that chain tension there, as it goes round, that cam is going to retard itself. So you see the chain moving there. So the engine's coming around. I'll go around again. So the engine's coming around. Valve's getting to the point. It's on the cam follower. It goes to push down on it. The cam follower's got more pressure. The cam retards to make that chain taut. So this cams are now moving around in one motion with the top of this now taut as a clean, fresh, new chain should do. So what you've got then is the exhaust cam is retarded, constantly running at a retarded angle. So thinking about it in simple terms, we've got one millimeter. Now these are KR exhaust cams. KR exhaust cams have an exhaust or a valve lift of 10.2 millimeters. That means when one of these lobes, the top of this lobe is 180 degrees down there and pushing down at its furthest point on the cam follower, the valve has opened 10.2 millimetres. Now bear in mind, we've lost a millimetre because there's slack in this chain. So that exhaust valve is now only opening to 9.2 millimetres. So we've lost one millimetre valve lift and the KR exhaust cams are known for being a very good cam on the exhaust side as in lift. So with the slack chain, flopping around. When the slack's taken up and the cams are moving around, that exhaust cam is only opening those valves to 9.2 mil, not the 10.2 mil going off a perfectly unworn camshaft. Now what that is going to do is reduce performance. You probably won't notice it because if you've had the car for years, it's going to be a gradual sort of reduction in that lift. So that's that really. So that should have made it perfectly clear, hopefully, um, what can go wrong if these chains aren't changed. So ideally, when you're doing your cam belt, change that chain, and then the next time round, do your cam belt, you wouldn't change it. So every second cam belt change, you change that chain. In an ideal world, that's the way you sort of would want to do it. But Granted, most of us aren't going to do the miles, 40,000 miles in the Mark II Golf. So it's going to be on yearly. I can't remember exactly how many years the cam belt, but 40,000 miles every four years maybe because the rubber on the belt degrades itself. And that's what is why they're getting changed. Really. They degrade, stretch slightly, timing goes out and things can go wrong. So what I suggest or what I would be doing is 
if I'm putting a new set of cams in, change that chain for the sake of £10, I think, yeah, the last one I got from Euro Car Parts was £10, £12, something like that, even from VW, is going to be, on a worst case, 30 quid. Um, they're generic to quite a lot of twin cam engines of this era. So, that is one problem you can have. Another problem you can have with the cars that isn't noted in the servicing schedules. For instance, on a Mark V Golf GTI, which is my daily workhorse, the fuel filters aren't part of the service. So every time, even if you've had a full dealership service, not everything's getting changed. So things like that, you could have a Mark II Golf that's got pure dealer service history from brand new, 100, 110,000 miles, 20, whatever it is, after what, 30 odd years, that chain's never been changed. So I don't know how much power you'd lose. It, you, there's a million different situations where people could lose varying amounts of power whether it's just a chain whether it's down to the cam belt time is slightly off anyway or a million things but um yeah so there we go that's the cams back in there do move around nice and clean There's nothing wrong with the cams and um, so all i'll do is just pop these out again put some more lube on it put the caps back on nip them down so i know they're all in there um yeah so next time you want to do your cam belt or even if you're interested now it's not much work to top of the rock cover, uh, inlet manifold off block the inlets up with a sock or something just so nothing falls down into your valves take the rock cover off worst case you could be looking at 40 quid in parts for a new valve gasket because you want to change it anyway because it's rubber it degrades um, and a chain and just see how slack it is so once you've got this to the engine to this point just retime your engine up using the um, markers in the manual and if you can see this one there you go it's just there actually that's your top marker that will line up with your valve cover so once it's lined up there pop it off you should be able to do this and if if you can do that that needs changing i mean the one i've just put on that engine it had a tiny bit of slack because it needs a little bit of slack for movement and insulation um but yeah that kind of slack you want to be changing it so i'll get on with putting the rest of these cams back in There we go, that's all the cams back in. Cam follows back on in the order. So as I'm looking at ahead this way, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all that way. Now, what I was doing is when I was putting them in, is just <clears throat> once I tapped it down with a hammer, just give it a little rotate to make sure it's not seized it up. And so plenty of oil on there. Just really to keep the corrosion away, because like I say. A bit of corrosion sat on one of the cam lobes can pit into it and leave me needing to do more work on the cams. So that's the end of that one. So thanks for watching. Click subscribe, like, comment. Um, any questions, just stick them in the comments. I'm happy to help them. You can see there now. The cam as well has got a bit of tautness on it with the bearings. You can see how much play, how much movement it has. So there you go. Cheers.